For example, you find out that your mother or a close relative have been diagnosed with a uh, you know, serious life-threatening disease. How do you cope? How do you think positive? How do you stay stable there? Thank you. I know when somebody dear to us, uh, their life is threatened or something comes to them, injury, accident, disease, well, it will cause distress to yourself. But I want you to understand this. <clears throat> See, this is the nature of life, this is what I've been trying to remind you from the beginning in this last uh, whatever hour and a half, that we need to understand this is a fragile happening, this life. Right now it's on. The design of this life is such, see, inhalation, exhalation, inhalation, exhalation, next inhalation did not happen, this is gone back to the pavilion. Hmm? You did nothing wrong, you just stood there, but back to the pavilion many times, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> no way at short, nothing, simply it just nicked by itself and went off. <laughs> so this is the case, this is the nature of our existence. It is just that when somebody is dear to us, we get so emotionally wrapped by this. This is simply because you have only one or two or three or four people who are dear to you. I live a life where so many, I don't know the number, so many people are very intimately, very profoundly involved with me on a daily basis. So in my life, how many people that are dear to me I have buried, don't ask me. It's happening all the time, mm. all right? So right now, the reason why you go through life the way you go through life is because your involvement is very selective, very discriminatory. Only this one person you'll involve because I identify her as my mother. Only that person, because I identify him as my brother. But if you knew larger involvement with life, you would understand almost every day you lose somebody who is very dear to you. Yes, this is the case with me. Does it mean to say you have no emotion? Does it mean to say there is no sense of loss? No, all this is there. All of it is there. It is just that. If you are in terms with the realities of your existence, you live one way. This is what I was trying to tell you in the beginning itself. You think your psychological world is bigger than the existential creation. What this means is, your creation has become more significant than the creator's creation. Once this happens, inevitably you will suffer. If somebody is ill around us, what do we do? We do our best to turn them around if it's possible. If you cannot turn them around, you let them go gracefully. This is all you can do. Whether you cry, laugh, turn, you, turn yourself on your, you know, upside down, do whatever the hell you want. This is all that will happen, isn't it so? The question is just this, whatever comes our way in our life, Life will come, birth will come, death will come, disease will come, defeat will come, victory will come, all kinds of things will come if you're living an active life. Will you handle it gracefully or will you make a mess out of it? That's all the choice you have, isn't it? Do you have any other choice, I'm asking you? Whatever life throws at you is not your choice. What you make out of it is one hundred percent your choice, isn't it? This choice you must exercise. This choice you must exercise. What life throws at you is not your choice. Who knows what kind of ball is the next ball? You don't know. What life throws at you is not your choice. 
What you make out of it is your choice. This is the power of being human, that you can make what you want out of it. If I'm saying, I know uh, this is very hurtful what I'm saying, but you must decide whether you want solace or you want a solution to your life. I am not somebody who will say pretty words and give solace. I do that only to children. With children, if they say something, okay, we'll hug them, hold them, do this. Well, if somebody is in grief, even if they're adults, because when they're in grief, they become like children. So we treat them like children. But you must decide in your life whether you want solace or solution to your life. If you want solution, there is one way to approach. If you just want solace, we can give pretty words, but what will they do? With all the pretty words, I will die, you will die, isn't it? <laughs> solution is just this, we come to terms. This is why I am saying, from being a physiological and psychological drama, you have to become a phenomena of life. That's what you really are. What is the most important thing in your life right now? that you're alive right now, isn't it so? Hello? Is it the most important thing? Life is the most important thing, not what you wear, not what you parked outside, not the home that you're living in, not anything else, not your thought and emotion. What is most important is the life that you are, but how much attention has gone into that dimension of life? If your attention was for that, you would see your, in your involvement with life would be indiscriminate. Once your involvement is indiscriminate, you will learn to handle everything gracefully. Right now when you're in distress, when somebody dear to is ill, this sounds cruel, I know that. But I'm still taking the risk of saying you this, saying this to you, because I want you to ponder upon this, because this is all the choice we have. We don't have a choice to decide what life throws at us. We have a choice to decide what we make out of it.